his novel. You think you'll get famous? Now a super agent could make him a star. I'm not sure how we're gonna say ladies, man. But will he sell his soul to sell his book? Can you be younger, cuter? Oscar winner oh. Richard Dreyfuss and Marsha Mason reunite. She is a Philistine. She is behind you. All new Max Bickford, CBS Next. You're supposed to do what with that egg? It's a humanities class project to teach kids about responsibility. Me and Susie Gooley have to carry it around together for a whole week. Why? Because we're married. The egg is our kid. Ah, a new Bickford. And he looks like me. Pretty hard-boiled little character, isn't he? He's raw. Dad. So, why didn't you tell me you were getting married? I would have registered you guys for China. Mr. Gaffney assigned us. We didn't even get to pick who we wanted to live with for the rest of our lives. We're back with Jerry Zabowski. So, Jerry, in a mere six months, you rocketed from obscurity at Florida State University. That's Jerry Zabowski. No, no, the Tony Robbins what the hell is he doing with Maury Povich? I, 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 I met this guy last year. He's a history teacher. <laughs> He's not a teacher, Dad. He's famous. Maury, uh, I intend to single-handedly bring back the male chauvinist via the Internet. Well, according to your website, which boasts 85,000 hits a day, mm -hmm. The American male has finally decided to take back his pants. That's his and website, takebackyourpants.com. So what about the women? Where do they fit in? Well, Mari, we're smarter than they are. We're more determined than they are, and we're bigger than they are, too. This is not your father's chauvinist anymore. The new radical American male has been gutted, retooled, and completely rehung. And uh, What let has happened to I'm Jerry? I have pulled a major coup. Media darling Jerry Zabowski has agreed to come account for himself in my pioneering women's class tomorrow. I saw the old charmer on TV this morning. Isn't it amazing how every character flaw is magnified by the media? Like, for instance, his mouth, which is <laughs> tolerable on a small scale, suddenly becomes unbearable. <laughs> He was charming in an oafish and articulate way when he visited campus. I wonder where this ugly new him comes from. Well, in these days of instant notoriety, where does anything come from? Speaking of that, by the way, what are you two going to be tussling over? Venus envy? I was thinking more along the lines of feminist theory in the 1860s. Oh, well, he'll say it's the same thing. <laughs> hey, something else. I spoke to my editor about your novel. Now, I know you're rewriting, but she said if you want to send it, now's a good time. Well, thank you, but I think I'm going to wait. I have sent it to the top 30 literary agents. Kinko's plus postage is over 800 bucks. Oh, wish you'd ask me. I could have saved you some stamps. Beetleman and Anderback, for instance, are too high on the food chain. They'll never call you back. I know, but why not start at the top? I mean, it's not like my ego's invested in this thing. It's my first novel. Fiction is not my life. Professor Bickford's office. Whatever happens, it'll be interesting. At least for a history teacher who's looking forward to a summer Professor break. Professor Bickford! Lilith Bigelow? Oh, my God! The Lilith Bigelow? Dinners with Norman Mailer? Lunches with Tom Wolfe? The mothership of all literary agents. Yeah, I wonder what she wants. Maybe there's some postage due. You didn't tell me you'd sent your book to Lilith Bigelow? I told you. I started at the top. She's on hold. Should I take a message? Yeah. No! She wants to talk about representing her book. You get over there and take that phone. No. Max! Lorraine, just tell Miss Bigelow that I'll call her back. Take that phone! I don't know what to say. You say hello. You say you're glad to hear from her. And then you buckle your seatbelt, look around, memorize this day, because everything in your world has just changed. <laughs> to see you tonight she was in boston and she just thought she'd swing by that's funny coming from the 2000 pound gorilla she is notoriously impossible to even get on the phone and she's so image conscious that i've never seen her photograph when she's not flanked by celebrity she's gonna like my impression of johnny carson <laughs> wait look at me 
You're in shock, aren't you? In shock? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you I'm are. flattered, and I'm curious, and I don't understand what her big rush is. You don't understand. She's flipped for your book! She thinks you're going to be hugely successful, and she wants to snap you up before anybody else does. Can we hire this part-time teacher already? Rex and I have the paddle court reserved. Lilith Bigelow is coming here to sign Max as a client. The woman who gave Truman Capote back his career? On Charlie Rose last month, she said that she hates every piece of fiction she's read for the past two years, but she's driving from Boston to meet Max. Well, there'll be no living with him anymore. I don't believe this guy. I write things down, it becomes a grocery list. He writes things down, it becomes a ticket to everything you ever wanted in your entire life. I saw her once on Letterman. She seemed pretty harmless. Talked about her dog. She talked about her dog being bulimic. And why is it exactly that you know so much about her? She rejected my first novel in 1995. I have followed her passionately ever since in the way that only the bitter and the spurned can. Max, you might want to change your shirt. Why? This is the shirt I wear every Friday. You don't meet Lilith Bigelow every Friday. Your collar's frayed. Okay, okay. I'll change the shirt. But first, at least get some of these resumes done. He doesn't get it. Max Bickford died in the wool academic, thrust without warning into the unforgiving spotlight of celebrity. Don't say that to him. You'll make him paranoid. He may not realize that half the reason that he chose academia is because it's a safe harbor from the real world. That's why we all chose it. He has no idea what's about to come. All of his insecurities are suddenly going to be under a microscope, the likes of which he's never known. He does understand it, OK? He wasn't born in a turnip patch. And he's right here in the room with you. I told you that turnip patch thing was a rumor. And he's read Faust. He has a lot of questions about what he would be willing and unwilling to do for success. Well, one thing's for certain. He's going to wish when they take that dust jacket photo he'd spend a couple more hours at the gym. <laughs> Jerry Zabowski. Hey, Professor. Just watched you on television. Thank you. Last time I saw you, you were teaching the history of wheat. Hey, whatever happened to that old millstone? I divorced her. You divorced Nancy? Mm-hmm. She was a brilliant woman. That was a big part of our problem. When I started my website, I found out there were a lot of other men out there tired of being led around with their wives. Pretty soon, I have a following. People are calling me to talk. They wouldn't let me shut up, even when I wasn't sure what I was talking about anymore. And now I tour, I lecture, it keeps me busy, and I'm going to make $350,000 next year off my website T-shirt. But I'll tell you, it's hell being single again. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, aren't you here a day early? I like it here. It's a beautiful campus. Andrea's a good-looking woman. What reason do I have to stay home? Hey, I need your advice. Self-promotion being your middle name. Mm -hmm. I wrote a novel, and Lilith Bigelow is coming up here to see Careful, me. Careful, Max. That woman sprinkles testicles on her cornflakes, and you've got a book to protect. Remember, you are the talent, and she works for you. Well, she doesn't work for me yet. I haven't signed her. Don't be a putz. Sign. Do whatever the hell she tells you. Whatever happened to TakeBackYourPants.com? You're a writer, it's a metaphor. If this woman says that chiffon and pumps will sell this book, call me, we'll go shopping. What are you, about a size 18? <laughs> Isabel, what's the quickest way for me to lose 10 pounds of ugly fat? Cut off your head. You kill me, Max, I don't see you for months, then you troop in here like this is Lourdes. I don't do miracles, okay? Besides, you don't even have an appointment. Look, I've decided I want to become as physically fit as a man moving towards death can possibly be. So if you can help me lose 10 pounds in the next eight hours. I'll work with you, Max. But you can't drop 10 pounds overnight. The diet ads say you can. Those are diuretics. It's water weight. You lose it one week, put it back the next. That'll work. I just want to be thin for about an hour. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, okay? You're warmed up. Drop and give me 60. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> right? That got your heart going? Come tomorrow. I've got a cancellation at 10. And don't waste my time. <laughs> Everything.
everything is just as he described it. The campus, this office. A stair that could peel paint. You must be Lorna May Clung. Lorraine Tater. Oh, my God. Uh, Miss Bigelow, uh, uh, you said you weren't coming until tonight. I lied. I wanted to see him in his natural habitat. Where is my golden boy? Working out. Working out? Oh, excellent. Well, I should have known the book is brimming with sexual gymnastics. Oh, this is my assistant, Alphonse. What a way he has with words. I feel just as if I'd been here before. Oh, this must be his wife. What a triumph to have made his pain into a novel that will live for all time. Wow, you really like his book. Professor Bickford, Lilith Bigelow. You're not right. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. He's not right. We were expecting more John Irving, less Andy Rooney. Well, we imagined you from the sex. Well, I could slip into my bondage gear if you'd feel more at home. Glad it worked for you. He can look much better. Please, I'll be the judge of that. No offense. None taken. <clears throat> Stop when you find my good side. This is all about getting Jane Housewife to turn off Springer and come out to your book signing. How tall are you? 6'3". <laughs> you are catching on. Oh, my goodness. Your collar is frayed. Oh. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Well, I would have thrown it away, except I kept hearing the press say, no frills, regular guy. It says teachers pay and it's not sexy. Lose it. Okay. So, uh, Lilith. May I, may I call you Lilith? Please. I know you're very good at what you do, but you should know that I didn't write this just to sell copies to Lonely Housewives. Are you playing hard to get? <laughs> Perish the thought. <laughs> I want to be gotten. <laughs> I just thought... Before we join forces, we should talk about why I wrote the book. All they care about is will it hold their interest? And before it can hold their interest, you have to. Pretty blue eyes. I'm just not sure how we're going to say ladies, man, with this. This is really making a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But that's why they give me the 10%. I'll figure something out. I always do. <laughs> Next, Alphonse. Chatting up Andrea Haskell. Well, first we'll grab a bite to eat, and then we'll grab her. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? Uh, why do you want to find Andrea, and, and I thought you came to see me? I did, too, until I saw you. Get it together if you want to make millions. Millions? Did you dress him? Susie, he's an egg. He's our egg, and I'm not taking him out without a coat. I know kid of mine is wearing this. You want to introduce me to your wife? No, I want a divorce. <sighs> Hi, I'm Susie Gooley. You must be Lester's grandfather. Ooh. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you, Susie. Well, this thing with your grandson is not working out. He's not my grandfather. He's my father. He just looks old. What are you looking at? Good morning to you, too, sunshine. Are you okay? Why wouldn't I be okay? You look more tired than usual. How tired do I usually look? I guess when we don't get a solid night's sleep, it shows more as we get older. I slept fine. It was waking up that spoiled everything. And what do you know about getting older? You're young. You got your whole life ahead of you. Who put this mirror up? I did. And it's not one of those in fairy tales that tells you what you want to hear. Well, take it down. No. It's her office, Max. It's her office, Max. You've got to be kidding. Yeah, well, David wants to hang out, and I've got this kid to watch. And Susie will have to want me to go to ballet. Susie, huh? Is that the mom? Do you like her? Well, it's weird. I feel like I want to be around her, and then I am, and she totally annoys me. Welcome to hormones. One day, you'll be a man who doesn't feel complete without a woman. 
Yeah, well, right now I'm sane. Go to your friends. I'll watch little Benedict here. Whoa! Boy. You gotta watch him like a hawk. His name is Lance. Her idea. $12,000? Nothing of any real value has ever been written by a woman. Oh. You said that, Professor Zabowski, addressing the national grid for learning, decrying that there are no female equivalents in fiction to Melville or Hawthorne. You're right. I said it. And it was a stupid, rotten thing to say. Oh. Yes, it was. And I want you to know that I cursed the day that I ever made that remark. OK, apology accepted. Can I ever make it up to you? Shall we discuss the nature of your website, takeoffyourpants.com? Take back your pants. <laughs> Take back your pants.com. I, I want to commend you, Professor Zabowski, for accepting the challenge of speaking before a group of women whom you accused of being less intelligent, less determined, of smaller bone structure, and general physical strength than men. Well, I'm glad to be here. Have I misunderstood your basic premise, Professor Zabowski? Are you actually espousing the notion that men are better than women in virtually every important way? What I think, Professor Haskell, is that men are better than women at being men. But don't you also contend that these men who are better at being men are also brighter, bigger, uh, and, and more driven as people in general? Do you think I'd have the audacity to stand here in front of this group of beautiful and intelligent women and agree that I made a statement like that? I'd have to be some kind of an idiot. <laughs> and if I did make a statement like that, I beg to differ with myself. So you don't actually believe that men are superior to women in any general way? No, not really. And if I did say that sometimes, it was just to gain acceptance by my peers. But do I really believe that? No, not 100%. Ah, but you believe it a little. But I also believe that women are brighter a little, too. So it balances things out. So you're kind of an opportunist as far as having an opinion goes. Well, America was founded by opportunists. The very bedrock of the life, liberty, and freedom that we so much enjoy was basically an outgrowth of us coming in uninvited and plunking down our bags. Now, in my own way, I'm just trying to carry on that tradition the best way that I know how. So exactly what are you trying to take back, Professor Zabowski, in the taking back of your pants? <laughs> I'm trying to take back the man that I want to be, the symbol of leadership. For no one in their right mind is going to follow a man without his pants. <laughs> and in repanting uh, a man, let me say that I, I truly believe that we strengthen the women around him because we differentiate very clearly the separate and complementary identities. Now, if women want to be better women, I firmly believe that men must be better men. And I know no shorter route than for a man to take back the pants that were traditionally worn by our founding fathers. <laughs> and the t-shirt is available in the lobby. <laughs> Hey, what are you guys doing here? Check up. Me too. Who are we kidding? We're here about the ad. $12,000? When they ran those ads last year, they were only offering three. I just want to hear what it involves. Yeah, me too. I haven't made up my mind to actually do it or anything, but uh, $12,000 would sure buy a lot of band equipment. <laughs> my mother would kill me if she knew I was here. I'm thinking about my father. You're lucky now. Your dad lives in the real world. Yeah, well, it's my body, isn't it? Hey, I fell asleep. Hi. Didn't mean to scare you. I was just wondering if you decided what you were going to do about Lilith. You mean before she went looking for you? She was looking for me? Why, why, why didn't you tell me? Did, did, did she say that she's read Elvis slept here and here and here? No and no and no. What did she say? Oh, she wouldn't even read me before oh, I got listen published. listen to you. You're absolutely burbling. Oh, well, a little burbling is in order. <laughs> if you're young and beautiful, 
You have nothing to fear. Oh, Max, neither do you. She makes writers into superstars. Don't blow this chance just because you're scared. Miss Haskell. Mr. Zabowski. Scared? I enjoyed a little tussle this morning more than words can say. Well, we'll have to do it again sometime. This has nothing to do with being scared. Maybe some writers don't want to be superstars. What flew up your butt? You know, it's the Lilith Bigelows of the world who reinforce people's natural, errant inclinations to judge a book by its cover. Max, it's not her fault. Publishing is a youth market. If you want to get anything done in any business nowadays, Max, you have to play ball with marketing. Some people play ball. Some people. Others put up lemonade stands at the corner and sell copies run off at Kinko's before they subscribe to the pandering dictates of a Philistine like Lilith Bigelow. She turns self-respecting novelists into Barnum and Bailey billboards. She is the reason that adequately educated American adults haven't read anything that isn't displayed at Walmarts. She is behind you. And now you're playing just a little too hard to get. Andrea Haskell, Lilith Bigelow. Oh, Lilith, it's a pleasure. <laughs> do you have a new book that might interest me? As a matter of fact, I do. Now, tell me, who are you with? And how can I steal you away? I am a fabulous agent for you. Want to go work out? No, not really. How about that, Andrea, huh? Keeping that new book of hers a secret. Boy, there's someone who'll never hesitate to market her wares. Face it, Max, you're fighting City Hall. A modern novel only exists because writers take on personas. So what do you say? In order to sell books, we gotta wear lifts and get hair plugs? Well, let me put it another way. What are you, 93, 94? <laughs> I'm 52. At our age, the brass ring seldom falls within reach. And when it does, Hey, this thing you wrote about with the egg salad, did you actually do that? Oh, God, I am never going to discuss egg salad again with anyone as long as I live. Oh, God, my shoulder. Oh. I'll try not to tense up. You don't come for two months, now you're overtaxing. Well, he is a Democrat. Hello, Jerry Zabowski, recently divorced. Are you here to work out? No, I don't do any of this. In fact, I'm electronically stimulating my muscles by doing absolutely nothing. I'd like you to notice I've had a tummy tuck, no scars, headed out to my liposuction. He's getting a brain transplant next. <laughs> we got off on the wrong foot. Yeah, the one you stuck in your mouth. <laughs> Sit down, Max. Where's the bouncer? He has a life, too, you know. <laughs> Look, I was off base with what I said before. Not that far off. I didn't learn to sell in the circus, but everything I needed to know about publishing, I learned in the garment district. My father was a tailor. Yeah? My father ran a deli. I figured as much from the book. Real people in there. Real feeling. I never went to college. Reading your book, I felt like I had. Look. <clears throat> I don't want to tell you your business, but when I wrote this book, I was trying to be honest with myself. And then you come along and tell me I've got to become someone I'm not in order to sell it. And I don't even know where it came from. I, I certainly didn't sit down to write the great American novel. Maybe that's why you succeeded. <laughs> you know what I did when I finished reading your book? Got up from my desk, walked to the landing, and I threw it down the stairs. And this is a good thing? It made me cry. I haven't cried since my mother died 15 years ago. I wanted that book to, to go away, the, the same way we want a, a truth that hurts to go away. And that's really why you came to see me. Because you think that the book matters? Max, a book like yours, it comes along once in a great while. And when it does, it is bigger than everything else around it. Bigger than the agent, bigger than the author. We both have to serve it. And all that matters from this day forward is that we get your book in people's hands. Well, um, I'll think about what you said. 
And I thank you for thinking it's that good. You love teaching, don't you? <laughs> Too bad you won't be doing much of that anymore. What do you mean? Book tours, talk shows. Oh, not to mention securing a deal for your next book and the writing that will require, which we have to decide next when you take your sabbatical. Sabbatical? Well, it's almost summer. I, I, I could promote the book while school's out. <laughs> the book won't be typeset until fall. I'm going to need you available for most of next year. So the sooner you tell the school and the kids that you'll be away, the easier it'll be. <laughs> How's the marriage? Uh, Susie and I are separated. Oh, I'm sorry. How you doing? It's better this way. We were fighting all the time. It gets complicated when there's a kid involved. When are you meeting your friends, Dad? Aren't you going to be late? Yeah, yeah. I better get going. Kind of sorry. I made plans. This afternoon, I thought getting out would be good for me. Kind of wish I was staying here with you guys. Bye, Dad. Hey, I'm conflicted. What's the matter with your neck? Uh, he told you he's conflicted. I hurt myself trying to be healthy today. God, look at this guy over here. You can bounce quarters off his stomach. You know, men used to look like Spencer Tracy and Lee J. Cobb. I want those men back. You know, I used to have women on the brain. I used to think about women all the time. You know, I would walk down the street, I'd look at a face, I'd see the curve of a breast. You know what I think about now? The waistlines of younger men. Your doctor told you what to do, cut out carbs, eat protein, do yoga. Come on, he purchased a mat. It's excellent for the abdominals. I got a full aerobic workout in a stonga. That's outside of Detroit, right? Listen to us. Did our fathers talk like this? Like what? Like, like yoga mats and, and, and the stangas. And conflicted. Well, I am conflicted. You're conflicted because you're being told that if you look better, your book will sell better. You know, people from all walks of life are thinking about this now. And there are so many ways to not age that it's very tempting. Well, it's curse enough we're all going to live to be 100. Do we have to look like it, too? Hey, you know the definition of sex after 60? What? Shooting pool with a rope. Oh, I'm never going to be without that image in my head, am I? Don't fight a wall. Roll with it. Well, here's to bright, educated people talking about utterly superficial things. Superficial? We're talking about a deep-rooted fear of death and the sense that we have less and less time every day. That's not superficial. Another Shirley Temple for me and my friend. Morphine for everyone else. I know why I need to pay child support. We're not even officially divorced yet. It's a trial separation. But how can I work and also have full custody? Full custody? I want... What's his name again? Gwyneth. I thought it was a boy. I changed my mind. Well, if I'm paying child support, I want Gwyneth at least two days a week. Are you bored with this? <sighs> I thought you'd never ask. Can we find something fun for her to do so we can have fun? Like maybe she could find some playmates? <laughs> Why didn't we think of this before? You want to go play my Game Boy? Sure. You do it one at a time, or you No, do you do both at the same time. It you freshens your face. Freshens your face. Max, what the hell are you doing? Will you keep your voice down? He is just thinking about talking, just talking to a doctor that I know. just wondering what would be involved if I did something like this. Like that, and maybe something like that. You mean you want to do it? This, yes. And this. Well, I thought about doing something about this. Uh, that. And, and you know, I want to do a little of, uh, look. <laughs> now, listen, I have the gal for you. She's not cheap, but the people she's done don't look like they came out of a wind tunnel. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Look, my hands are shaking. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually thinking of doing something like this. We really are a generation of people who refuse to give up their youth. They're like 16-year-olds trapped inside bodies aging like Dorian Gray. The other day I was walking down the street and I caught a glimpse of myself in the window and I thought, who is that?
That is not me. That is not who I am inside. That's some old guy who looks beat up and close to the end of his life. Middle age is for finding out that what we thought we knew is a mirage. And, and the unthinkable is suddenly thinkable. <sighs> I'd say have a drink, but you don't even have that solace anymore. I'd say let's get a couple of cheap broads, but you probably have too much character for that. Yeah. Well, this Havana and the knife may be all you have left. Gentlemen. Protein, 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 protein. <laughs> finished your novel. I didn't know you were a Navy brat. Oh, was your dad in the service, too? Major in the Army. We moved 15 times before I even started high school. Fort Dix, Fort Bragg, Fort Knight. Mm -hmm. Listen, you captured the desperation of a kid trying not to drown in a sea of uniforms. Well, I was hoping that sandbags and saddle shoes would have a chance of finding a popular audience. Well, with me handling it. Do roses bloom? Oh, Lilith. <laughs> I am so glad that you're interested. Oh. And I hope this doesn't sound out of line, but please don't give up on Max. <laughs> He's kind of unsure about all of this, but that novel that he wrote is... Oh, it's going to pay for my retirement on the Côte d'Azur. Listen, he'd have to run really fast to get away from me. Okay. I don't know. Maybe we could change the title. You ate my son. I did? You ate your grandson. Well, I, uh, it happened so fast. Man, Dad, you eat anything. What am I going to tell his mom? She's coming to pick him up. He has cousins. We'll just put one of them in his clothes. <gasps> Mr. Gaffney put a stamp on the bottom of the egg so nobody could switch. Dad, this is a quarter of my grade. All right, Lester. I can write a letter explaining what I did, but this is not really my fault. You and Susie. We're supposed to keep the little guy under your wing. That was the lesson, okay? You let him out of your sight. He, he, he started wandering around strange bins at all hours. He... There's one more thing for Susie to get mad about. Shall we give the little bugger a bath before bed? Uh, Susie? We need to talk about the little bugger. He did what? He said it happened really fast. Selling your eggs, huh? It's right out of 1984. Dad, nearly my entire life has been lived after the year Orwell thought the world would go to hell. What's wrong with your neck? I have a pain in my neck, and don't change the subject. If you want money, get a job. Or I'll help you get a loan. Selling your eggs? How is this different from donating sperm? I don't have the slightest idea. Are you telling me that you would have as big a problem if your son donated to a sperm bank? I didn't say that. Did I say that? If your son was helping some infertile couple, people who had tried to get pregnant for years and... Well, I would still have questions about ethics. I would still have questions about health. Questions? What about qualms? Well, depending upon the answers, some of those questions could turn into qualms. Uh, face it, Dad. It's a sexist attitude. Hi, Max. Hi. Come in. in oh, in. Max, this is Dr. Chekhov. Ingrid, please. Ah, uh, Ingrid, hi. Nice to meet Hello. you. Hello. I guess house calls must be somewhat unusual, huh? Uh, Dr. Chekhov did my tummy talk. That's like being army buddies. Jerry said you preferred an at-home consult. Actually, I said that you were mortified to even be discussing this. Well, I, I, uh, I don't know what we can accomplish on, on, uh, on, on, on my 
lunch hour. Max, Dr. Chekhov understands that you're only making inquiries. Nobody's going to tie you down and suck the fat out of you if you don't want them to. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> Although it's tempting. <laughs> Here. Now, have a look-see. <laughs> Do you do all this at your spa? Mm hmm Nips, tucks, lifts, vacuum cartridge. It's kind of a full service station. That's amazing. These guys look like they've had the air let out of them. <laughs> Just think, Max, that could be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm hysterical. Oh. oh, nervous energy. People are usually pretty tense at first when looking into cosmetic changes. Now, would you like to see how we get these splendid results? Hey, what did you decide? I'm not ready to go through the fertility shots. Not this month, anyway. When Carrie started the Pergonal, she missed so many days of class that she got an incomplete in biology. Rita's gonna do it. She's meeting with a prospective couple tonight. Well, I'm gonna wait, then, and see if Rita's hormones get whacked out, too. And the more I thought about it, the less I was willing to take all those drugs to make more eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that creeps me out, too. But, you know, if, if I can help people who want kids to have one, I might just brave the needle. We use different sizes for different anatomical sectors. I told Max there'd be some discomfort. This does not say discomfort. This says run. Max, how do you think Dr. Chekhov gets to the essential you? Look, Dr. Chekhov... Ingrid, please. Uh, Ingrid, uh, you may be aces wielding these babies, but... 2,048 uh, satisfied customers. Once you get past the initial disgust... 2,048? What is that? That's like 600 pounds of ugly fat. You could make two Green Bay Packers out of that. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Couldn't we just talk about, you know... Well, I do it all, but uh, this and... Uh, and this is usually the last stage. Can she just show you the hair plugs? You won't believe the improvement. Yeah. You're gonna feel like a new man. Our guest this morning, his first-time novelist, the new and improved Max Bickford. Thank you, Maureen. Very much for coming, Max. Flattered that you asked me here to take back my pants. That's my line, Max. Yeah. Jerry, why are you hosting Maury's show? Max, we'll ask the questions. Tell us about your book, Max. That's right, Max. Tell us about your book. Well, I'd like to tell you all a little bit about my book. You grew hair just to sell your book. What do you think of that, Lilith? Well, it's a start, but... We need real changes. Well, if we're talking about changes in my book... No, Max. We're talking about changes in you. In you. In you. Can you be younger? Cuter. Thinner. How tall are you? When I stand up on my hind legs and bark like a dog... <laughs> you want to be rich or respectable? Do you want to be rich or respectable? Can I be both? Rich is an eight-city book tour and talk shows out the wazoo. Respectable is a footnote in history that I can't take 10% of. You are scared, Max. Scared. Just scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I'm gonna let it shine. school colors, eh? Think it's too late for a gal like me to go back to school? What's the matter? Oh, just the reality of this whole thing. You know, I... I don't want to appear ungrateful, but I, I don't think that I want everything that you have to offer. I had a feeling this talk was coming. I'm starting to read your moods. Emily Dickinson. Nobody pushed her around. 
<laughs> she just wrote, tended her little garden. During her lifetime, nobody knew her name. What, you don't want to go on sabbatical? This, this school, my friends, my kids, you yanked me up out of this and put me down into something else, into some other life. And the guy that wrote that book that you love so much, he won't even exist. Ah, I was afraid of this. You are a purple coat. It's what my father used to say about the stuff that stayed on the rack, season after season. It was beautiful, it was distinctive, just wasn't for everybody. Oh, Lilith. I'm getting older. There's not enough time to be for everybody. If I can't teach my classes, I can't hang out in my kitchen with my kids, if I gotta change all that, then I just... I don't want what you're selling. Okay. Okay what? Okay, we'll do it your way. We'll work around your life. It'll be a pain in the ass, the scheduling. And wait, your wait, book wait, will wait, not... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You'll do it my way? Why? I happen to like purple coats. <laughs> you may not get to wear one every day. May not go with everything, but damn, once you've got it on, nobody's looking anywhere else. <laughs> I'm signing with Lilith. You're signing with Lilith? I'm signing with Lilith, too. Ah, we can both sign with Lilith. We're different kinds of writers. Different styles, different looks. I mean, when she told me about traveling around the world as an army brat... Whoa, 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 whoa. She told me that she grew up in the garment district. <laughs> hey, Max. What did you think about Jerry's performance in my class? Well, I thought it was intriguing in a self-aggrandizing, factually garbled sort of way. Well, the students loved him. He said he's going to document the website as a sociology experiment, and he is writing this history on the contemporary loss of male power. Well, well, uh, wait. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? I'll send them to you. Thank you so much. So hmm. He likes the campus. He's getting rich on the website, so he'll work for peanuts. And he knows how to keep you in line. Wait a minute. Why were we interviewing everybody on Earth to teach part-time when we've had the brains behind TakeBackYourPants.com right in our midst? Would you like to join our little Chadwick family, Jerry? You want me. You really want me. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I will, of course. You're welcome. But, uh... I'm hoping I'm not going to get an office at the dark end of this hall, and the parking lot is a bit far from this building. I'll need a decal oh right away. Oh, my God. What have we done? We're going to have to stare every day into this ridiculous face. And listen to endless sexist jokes. It won't all be fun. We'll have to teach a little. And I just saw that Isabel is starting this new exercise class. Let's bond as colleagues in a health-induced environment. <laughs> or we could go for margaritas. I'm easy. No, we're not the only ones to lose a kid. Jeremy and Kim left theirs at McDonald's. Some people are cut out to be parents, and others should just stay kids. Yeah, I'm glad we don't have to pretend we're a couple anymore. We don't really match. I'm so tall. I don't mind. I do. Nobody in class is as tall as me. Not even Bracco Silverman, and they made him repeat a grade. Well, I gotta go. Hey, um, at school, Let's pretend this never happened. I like you, and I wouldn't want our marriage to come between us. That was odd. Maintain balance, Jerry. She wants me. You know, when you come on to our Tai Chi instructor, it Spoils my inner peace. Well, I'm newly divorced. I may need retraining. What you need is neutering. You know, this is kind of like doing Jackie Gleason in slow motion. What am I doing, Isabel? Compared to what? Okay, that's time. Namaste. 
Tai Chi, we may have found a regime you can stick with, Max. Tomorrow at 6 a.m. for the faithful, and we pray for sun. No, I think doing Tai Chi in sub-zero weather was inspired, Isabel. Go in peace. I am breathing through my ears. I am hearing with my toes. I am seeing with my breath. I am the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> I am leaving now for work. I am going now to recover. Now that we've had Tai Chi, let's go have some chai tea. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.